Welcome to 5 Minutes in the Word, a daily devotional in the Word of God. Derek, I've gotten to be around preachers my whole life. My dad was a preacher. I've taught preachers. And of course, I've been a preacher. I am a preacher. Uh, there's a big warning that you that preachers hear all their lifetime if, if they're in with the right people. And the point is, don't ever quit on Monday. Uh, Sundays can be somewhat grueling. Right. It doesn't matter how much you enjoy being with a brother or how much you enjoy presenting the Word. It's just, it'll wear you out before it's over. So don't quit on Monday. But I think there's a flip side here. There is. So there are things that maybe we ought to quit. So what, what would you think about? Well, I'd like us to think about, you know, what if, what if I quit? And I know when we say that, we think, well, okay, well, you know, if I quit, well, quitting is bad. You know, we always tell our kids, you know, never quit. To, and we want them to try harder and, and to succeed. Well, that's true. We don't want people to be quitters uh, in things that, that are good and that are going to help them to grow. But there are things in life that we do need uh, to quit, okay? So let, let's just, just to name a few off the top of our head. Well, we need to quit with a bad, having a bad attitude. Um, I have to tell my children that sometimes they're having a bad attitude. You know, we need to quit having that kind of that kind of attitude that uh, displays, you know, uh, you know, not not being great, uh, not having gratitude for what's being done, has been, is being done for us. You know, t uh, to be so selfish, that an attitude of just selfishness that just just consumes your life. Right. That's just those are just a couple of examples of attitudes that we need. Uh, to quit, you know, right. there are other things that we could say. Well, you know, we need to quit whining and complaining, and I mean, the list could go on and on of things we need to quit. And so, I think we can kind of can see what we're talking about here. Right. But let's let's go to some scripture. Let's think about Romans chapter six. Okay. Romans chapter six kind of helps us to see uh, some things and how and why we are to quit certain things. It says, "What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Certainly not." How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? You know, let's, let's think about that. So we have, you know, died to sin. That old self, that old person right. is supposed to be gone away with. It's supposed to be done and, and finished and put to the side and we're not to return. Right. But so many of us have a hard time quitting those things. Um, that we, we put on the, uh, uh, Christ in baptism, as we see in the next couple of verses. Uh, we see that we rise to walk in newness of life. Okay, we're, we're, we're there but then we start saying, well, you know, that life was pretty good. And so we, we go back to it and we keep going back to it. And right. we fall, fall into this pattern, this cycle, kind of like the, the Jews in the Old Testament, fall into this cycle of keep going back to the things that we know we should have put away a long time ago. So we have to look at ourselves. And each one of us is going to have different temptations, different things that come our way. We have to say, okay, what things do I need to quit? Uh, what things do I need to put away? What things can I no longer be a part of? Because if we're going to take the salvation that Jesus uh, has offered to us seriously, and we're going to grab hold of it and hold on to it, then we have to truly, we have to stay dead to those sins. Uh, those sins have to be a thing of the past. They can't be anymore because we are, uh, you know, in that new life. We're supposed to be. We're supposed to be living that new life. Um, I think about verse 5 here in Romans chapter 6. It says, For if we be united together in his likeness of his death, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves for our slaves of sin. For he who died has been has been freed from sin. Now if we died from died with Christ, we believe that he that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death he died, he died once to sin. Or he died to sin once for all. But the life that he lives, he lives to God. Likewise, reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, and alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. You know we see that we're to be dead to that sin. We're to truly live for Him. And it's because of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, we have the ability to do that. So what are some things you think about when we think about this idea of, of quitting in our life? Well, I think you've, you've highlighted it. There are other passages like Colossians 3 mm -hmm. where Paul may actually delve into more specifics right. where 
Romans 6 was a good general overview. General overview, yeah. Very good. But in Colossians 3, he says, If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on things of the earth. And, of course, then he elaborates. He goes on down. Verse 5, Therefore put to death your members which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, covetousness, which is idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience. So unlike that preacher who we really don't want to quit, we want him to just <laughs> relax a minute, take a deep breath, right. it's going to be all right. Unlike him, when we become Christians, there are some things we ought to quit and we ought to try to make it a, I quit that, I'm not going back.